Okay, as always, this is part of a series. There should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. New video every Friday um, on HTML5 and 3D stuff within HTML5. This is the code from last week. Obviously, I hope you've watched the previous videos because we're just building on to top of what we've done previously. Um, and this is our rotating um, semi-cone shaped cylinder. Uh, and it has a Lambert material and we also have some directional lighting pointing on it to give us some shading. Well, we're going to look at another type of uh, material today uh, and it's going to be I don't know if it's spelled if it's pronounced Fong. I, I assume it's probably pronounced Fong, uh, since it's P H O N G. Um, I have a tendency to say Pong, so forgive me if I'm saying that wrong. Um, but let's go ahead and look at our code. It's the same code from last week, but I've copied it into a new file called Fong.html. And again, all these uh, scripts will be uploaded to my website. There should be a link in the description of the video to uh, those files for you to download and play with. Um, so here we are, we have our cylinder object uh, where we've created it and then here's where we create the mesh material. Well this time instead of Lambert we are going to change this to say Fong. Now color is one parameter there. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the other parameters or properties that uh, a Pong Fong, our Fong material uh, can do. And basically a Fong material is a shiny uh, type material. It's going to have a shiny surface. Um, so if you want to give it kind of a metallic type look, that's kind of the sort of thing we're doing. We're going to pass it its parameters using JSON, uh, which is very s straightforward. Um, and these are the properties that you can give it. We are just going to look at a few of them. Uh, gives you an example here. Once again, the documentation here from the 3, uh, 3JS.org website. Very clear. They give you an example of exactly what you want to do with it uh, with some some of those properties built in. Now, uh, the first one here is ambient, uh, and that has to do with ambient lighting, which we haven't gotten into. But let's start looking at color. We already have it set to be a blue color, and we'll play around with that in a little bit. Um, but another option here is specularity, and it's also passing a color. Here in their example, they're using hex code for the uh, for the color. Let's go ahead and in here say specularity colon, and we'll give it a specularity of we'll say red. Let's go ahead and run that as is, and so now you're seeing the shininess. Uh, and the specularity, which is the shiny part, is red, but it's mixing with the blue. And it's giving us kind of a, a pinkish purple color. Um, when we go back in here, you can see that it also tells you if there's default. So the default color would be white if you didn't set anything. Ambient default color is white. Um, and, uh, and it also tells you what these things are. Ambient color of the material multiplied by the color of the ambient light which we haven't created, so that's why I'm not doing that. Uh, next one we're going to look at is the specularity itself. Uh, that's the one, oh, actually, we just did that. Specularity, um, the default is a dark gray. Uh, now let's affect the shininess. Okay, so shininess, the default is 30. Let's go ahead and say comma, because there's a new line, shininess, colon. And as if we hover over here, it will tell us that it's a float, which means it's a number that can have decimal points. Default is 30. Since this is what it looks like with 30, let's go ahead and turn that number down to 10. Save it, run it again. And it's kind of hard to tell here. Let's go ahead. But basically, it's the, the shininess is kind of feathered out a little bit more. I think is how I would describe it. Let's go ahead and turn it way up to like 100. And you'll see here, hopefully, cylinder is a good option. See how much straighter that is? It's, it's more of a shiny rather than a feathered out reflection. So you can see the width right there. And if we turn it back down to something like 10, watch as it goes down this line, that line will become much more feathered out. So 
higher the shininess, the thinner the reflection. If it's on a circle uh, or it's on a sphere, it would be a dot of light. The shinier it is, the smaller the dot be. The um, less shiny it is, the more that would feather out and be over more of your sphere. Again, uh, the specularity is the color and it's mixing with the blue giving us that kind of purplish pink color. Uh, let's look at uh, one more option in here and that would be the shading. By default it's doing a smooth shading uh, so it's it's automatically even if our uh, poly count is low it's going to smooth it for us. A sphere would probably be better to represent this uh, and in fact we'll probably look into that in future tutorials. But let's go ahead and change this to flat shading because by default it's using um, smooth shading, flat shading, you will actually see the polygons clearer. So we will go ahead and, oops, pasted the wrong thing in there. Paste the shading. Should be shading. What is the shading? It's going to be uh, flat shading. And if we this now you can now see the polygons uh, a little bit more uh, and that also has to do with the number of segments we put in there when we create the cylinder but you can uh, give it a smoother look without upping the poly count by giving it smooth shading so that's uh, those options there I'm not really sure I haven't really tried what no shading does but uh, go ahead and play with that again this code will be up on my website with uh, all the other codes from this series and you can uh, download and play with it change some of these other options again there's a lot more properties here we're just going over the basics today as always I hope you visit my website uh, filmsbychris.com that's Chris with the K there should be a link in the description uh, also a link again to the scripts if you have any questions feel free to visit my IRC channel filmsbychris.com forward slash IRC or if you go to filmsbychris.com there is a drop down for social networking uh, where you also see links to my Facebook, Twitter, uh, Google Plus account, but there'll also be a link to the IRC channel where you can come and chat with me and other people. That's a great place to ask technical questions rather than YouTube comments. Um, and that is about it for today. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this series, if you like this topic, be sure to like the video, give it a thumbs up so that I know you like it. Uh, and I keep making them. New video every Friday. If you hit a private one in the playlist, that means it's going to be coming out later on in the future. Just wait a week and another one will come out. Thank you for watching and have a great day. <laughs>